there, it's Shannon Magic Myers. Today we're looking at a bit of a tricky problem from section 11.3 in the Larson and Edwards calculus text. So the first part asks us to find all points of intersection of these two graphs of the two equations. A little bit tricky, but if you look at this second equation and we add one to both sides, we get that y plus one is x cubed substituting that value of x cubed in for y plus 1 we would get x cubed the quantity squared is equal to x so I just plugged x cubed in for y plus 1 and then we'll get x to the 6 subtracting x from both sides minus x equal to zero and factoring out the x we'll have x to the fifth minus one as the second factor so x is zero or x to the fifth is zero is one sorry raising both sides to the one fifth power just in case you forgot we have x is one so x is zero or x is one so let's find all points of intersection. Um, we have a couple different equations. Let's check it out. I'll go ahead and go with the y equals x cubed minus 1 equation to find the values for y. They intersect here, so we can choose either one. So we'll get y, and this would be at x equal to 0 y would be equal to 0 cubed minus 1, which is negative 1. So we'll have an order pair of 0, negative 1. And at x equal to 1, we will have y equals 1 cubed minus 1, which is 0. So we'll have the order pair 1, 0. So now we need to find the unit tangent vectors at each curve. So remember we've got those two points that we had found from the last one. So we'll bring those in momentarily. And we need to find the slope. Tangent means slope. So let's call the first one, uh, we'll just have y1. And then this one was plus 1. The quantity squared equals x. And then the other, the other vector was, we'll call it y2 equals x cubed minus 1. I just got this from our original problem. All right? So solving for y prime, for y1 prime, we have to use implicit differentiation meaning we have to use the chain rule when we're differentiating with respect to y1. So we will end up, once we isolate y1 prime, we'll have 1 over 2 times y1 plus 1. Good so far? All right, the second slope will be y2 prime equals 3x squared. A little easier. So now we have to find unit tangent vectors at each curve. So if we take a look at the two points we had, let's do 0, negative 1 first, y1 prime is going to be 1 over 2 times y1 in this case will be negative 1. We're still adding 1. So y1 prime will be 1 over 0, which is an undefined slope. So the j vector, correct, is, is, um, has a vertical slope at y is 0, but it can be 
either pointed up or pointed down. So the vectors plus or minus 0, 1, that j vector, are tangent to y plus 1, the quantity squared equals x. Now, at the point 1, 0, the slope for that y prime 1 would be equal to 1 over 2 times 0 plus 1. So we would have 1 half. So if we start at the origin and we take a look at a slope of 1 half, you'd be going up 1 over 2, right? Which would bring you to the vector 2, 1, right? But plus or minus that vector is going to be in the, it's going to be tangent to the graph y plus 1 quantity squared equals x at the point 1, 0. So we need a unit vector, right? So let's take a look at the magnitude of 2, 1, which will be the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 5. So plus or minus the vector 2 over root 5, comma 1 over root 5, tangent to y plus 1 squared equal to x. So these are both, um, you end up getting four vectors that are tangent at these two points, okay? Now, looking at the other slope, again, we'll start over here at 0, negative 1. We have y prime 2 is 3x squared. So at 0, 1, it would just be 3 times 0 squared, which is 0. So in this case, it's the horizontal line y equals 0, right? y equals 0. So what vectors that are unit vectors lie on that line? Beautiful. Plus or minus the i vector will be the answers to that one. And then working with that other point, it'll be a little more complicated, most likely. So let's see what our slope will be. So y prime 2 would be 3 times the quantity 1 squared, which is 3. That means that for every 3 you go up, you go over 1, which is going to give you a vector and it would be plus or minus at 1, 3. Remember, you get slope on that. And now to make this a unit vector, we need to find the magnitude of the vector 1, 3. That's going to equal to the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared. And that's going to equal to root 10. So putting it together with the vector, we'll just have 1 over root 10, comma, 3 
over root 10. y equals x cubed minus 1. Cool, cool. Uh, For part C, we want to find the angles 0 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to 90 degrees between the curves at their point of intersection. So let's just take a look at a graph really quick. So the first graph is, or is going to be, I'll do it in the same colors. We had, um, remember, y plus 1, the quantity squared is equal to x. So at 1, 0, we would have cosine theta equals to the dot product of the two vectors that we found there. And that would give us 1, 2 over root 5 it was, comma, 1 over root 5, dot, 1 over root 10, comma, 3 over root 10, having them in component form. So cosine theta would be equal to 2 over root 50 plus 3 over root 50. Cosine theta would be equal to 5 over root 50. So if you go into degree mode on your calculator or wherever, you, whatever you use to find it, you would need to find the inverse cosine of 5 divided by the square root of 50 which would be 45 degrees. And then at zero, negative one, we would have cosine theta is equal to, so looking back at those two vectors, what did we have? We had i and j, well, their dot product is going to be zero, so you'll get 90, but we'll have the dot product of 0, 1, and 1, 0. Cosine theta will be 0 plus 0. Cosine theta is 0, and that happens at 90 degrees. I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you're watching this show. And hey, if you like what I'm doing, click like and please subscribe. Bye.